You're listening to DraftKings Network. Now's a good time to remember where the story of tequila started. In 1795, the first tequila distillery was opened by the Cuervo family. And 229 years later, Cuervo is still going strong. Family owned from the start. Same family, same land. Now's a good time to enjoy Cuervo, the tequila that invented tequila. Go to Cuervo.com to shop tequila or visit a store near you. Cuervo, now's a good time. Trademarks owned by Beckley. SAB, the CV. Copyright 2024. Proximo. Jersey City, New Jersey. Please drink responsibly. This is the Dan Levator Show with the Stugats Podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by DraftKings. Stay tuned because you'll hear more about DraftKings and all it has to offer throughout the show. DraftKings, the crown is yours. The great Greg Cody mustache experiment has begun after uh, learning last week <laughs> that mustaches were back in. He is uh, in baseball and elsewhere. I thought all of those mustaches in baseball were ironic. Greg Cody said, I want to grow, uh, grow a mustache. It's going to be hard for me. And we are one week in. And it is looking pathetic. Yeah, my wife says that it's it's mustache like on the outside. Yes, but in the middle, right under my nose, is like it's not even growing. It's growing from the outside in. I know it's, it's weird. Crazy. Yeah, uh, why does Whiskers. your why does yeah. your voice sound that way? Are you tired from the playoff run? Uh, from the Panthers being on the cusp of winning the only real trophy in sports that matters? Yes, uh, yes, on both counts, it is the only real uh, trophy that matters, and yes. I'm a little tired. I'm, I'm under the weather. I'm battling for the show. Uh, I, I have a cold. I have bronchitis. I went to a, a walk-in emergency clinic yesterday and got a bunch of penicillin. Hmm. So I'm fighting through it. I knew that I didn't want to miss this show, but I knew that I could not miss uh, game five tonight when they raised the Stanley Cup. So I had to take extreme measures. So I'm jacking, jacking up penicillin right now. Uh, jacking it. Put it on yeah, the man. poll, please, Juju, at Levitard Show. Uh, can we all agree that the Stanley Cup trophy is the only noble trophy in sports to be won? Uh, Roy, you, you made a face when Greg Cody said, when the Panthers win the Cup. And this leads me uh, to an argument I've been having off air with both Chris Cody and Mike Ryan, who I believe to be cowards. Uh, we have the ability to put up billboards in Edmonton. We got uh, a rare... It's, it, Mike doesn't agree that it's rare, but we were given an offer by billboard salesmen saying that we could get something up last night. Mike Ryan legitimately threatened to quit the company, and Chris Cody doesn't want the burden of this series being decided somehow by billboards we put up in Edmonton. Like, they are running so scared, yeah. up 3-1, running so scared of being on the wrong end of this joke because they're terrified of jinxing what's happening around here. I, I'm not... This is devoid of tone. Please explain to me what's so funny about putting up billboards saying that the Panthers won before they actually won. No, it's saying Greg Cody was right before he's actually right when Damn he's right. got the most yeah, so wrong opinion I've ever heard in the history of well, this show. that's debatable. It's not. I Okay, you find it funny, and I guess it's subjective. I don't find that funny. I do. And then again, my face on a billboard is just like a dream come true. They're going to think that we bought it up 3-0 and we're just idiots. That's like, right. It makes no. us, the joke is That's now right. on us. If the we joke, win, no. joke on them. Yeah. We lose, joke Chris, on us. Chris, the joke's already on us because your dad has infuriated Canada with a dumb opinion. No, because if we win, he can say he's right. Yeah. Even though he's clearly not, yes. it's amazing. It's not a dumb opinion, but as the star... <laughs> what?! As, as the star of the billboard, yep. if the Cats win tonight, mm -hmm. and I don't care what score, they, I don't care if they win 5-4 and, and McGova rated scores three goals. Awful. If, if the Cats win in five games, and once again, McDavid and McJesus is 0 for career on Stanley Cups, that billboard works, and I endorse it. Mm -hmm. I don't. I won't pay yeah, we, for it, but I do endorse we it. We agree with you. The yeah. billboard you? works yeah. in, in the event that they win. They have to I win. Yes. I think it's a I bizarre agree. cell phone. If you put them up before yeah. and you you laugh and feel like you're getting one over at people yeah. not getting the nuance. Yeah. We 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 look dumb. We have to win. And we look yeah. also. 
we make the organization look classless, yeah. oh. and I don't like that either. Who cares? Yeah. Oh my what? God! Excuse me. I don't worry about What's that. You've got to be here? kidding. We've I been mean, making fun of sports for twenty years, and now this is the one we're serious on. Yes. This is the one yeah. that it's very important that in, we be serious. In on. Mike's defense and Chris's defense, I understand. Like they're about to win a Stanley Cup, they don't want shenanigans getting in the way. You wouldn't just, be doing this. They don't want it. Uh, you wouldn't be it. doing this for the Heat because you have more respect for it. It's oh. it's you, you cannot deny this. That is not true. I did billboards uh, after. Uh, uh, after something, and there was a beef. Like you, you don't jinx something before it happens. I disagree. You don't take a shot if you no. don't get punched in the mouth. Early right. bird gets the worm on billboards. Everybody knows that. If you don't do it tonight, you're setting yourself up for McAfee doing it tomorrow before you, and then we're just copycats. <laughs> and he's gonna yeah. do a billboard with me. Huh? Exactly. I think I think <laughs> it's very possible yeah, Pat McAfee should. puts up a billboard with Greg Cody that says Greg <laughs> Cody was right. Then at the bottom, the Pat McAfee show, and that's what we're opening ourselves up to if we don't do this right now. I want to open ourselves up to every possibility here, including being on the wrong end of the joke. Would you do this if it was the Dolphins? I would do this if this scenario presented itself where Greg Cody had a ridiculous opinion. I tried to do it with the Bills. Billy ran for the hills on that one, too. Well, no, that's not exactly true. <laughs> they didn't want to take our money in Buffalo, which I think, I think if we're in the billboard mood, I think Greg, I think in Buffalo we should put up a billboard that says the Dolphins will win the Super Bowl quotes Greg Cody mm -hmm. and just put that up before week one. You know what? I will write in a column just to justify that billboard. Okay. Is that how we do columns yeah. now? Yeah. You know. <laughs> yep. I'm, I'm for sale. <laughs> I'd, uh, Opinion I, for sale. I'd like to just really uh, allow everyone to absorb the sheer absurdity, okay? Because I've never been superstitious in my life. The sheer absurdity that you guys think us paying for a billboard will have a result that will be poor for you because we put up a billboard. Like, okay, and, no, no, just no. take just sideswipe superstitions in sports. Like, like, oh, everyone's stupid for having superstitions in sports. Everyone's yeah, got a lucky much. spot. Everyone's got a closeout jersey. This is something that is routine with sports. And you thumbing your nose at God because you think it's funny to put up a billboard saying Greg was right when he's been wrong and he still hasn't been proven right, even in the most utopian of scenarios. All it's the, not all funny and it's tempting fate. All well, the funnier. I don't, I don't understand this. You guys bought tickets to go to the game tonight. Because you want to watch the Panthers win the Stanley Cup. Would you not be jinxing the Panthers by buying tickets to go watch them win? No. I've been in that building for several close games. But you've games. been at a bar every other game this playoff run. No, not every other game. No. What are it's you talking so, about? It's so Billy, cute that like, grown please, people just, believe in jinxes. Please stop. Just rogue You're not like He's yeah. just gravitating to you to be an ally, and you're an anarchist that doesn't <laughs> care at all about this. What? Please stop. I'm actually uh, rooting against the Panthers tonight. You don't you say. Are. Really? I want, I want yeah. the Little game seven. Yeah, yeah, no yeah. shock there. I want to I think you're off regardless. <laughs> we have a company holiday uh, tomorrow. Uh, happy Juneteenth. Uh, and uh, Everybody has a company holiday tomorrow. Yeah. Um, well, not every company has. To no, I don't think. Well, they're that, racist. I don't think that that's correct, that every company uh, uh. celebrates Juneteenth. Is that uh, so? I, I actually would ask all of you this question. Does any other country other than ours celebrate Father's Day? The, the Yes. Why wouldn't what, we? It's, so Father's Day is that date in other countries as well? It's not an American commercial holiday. It's uh. everywhere. Father's Day is something that's celebrated all over the world. On, on, I never on, considered it. On I never even thought about it. I'm looking yeah. it up right now. But. I, would, I would think not. I My would wife think spoke to her dad in Cuba, and they were talking about Father's Day. So, yes. It seems to be a thing in Mexico as well. Hmm. Okay, so Cuba and Mexico. But yeah, but we don't get the day off for that. Uh, no. I, I, Juneteenth is a federal holiday. Yeah. That's why we're yeah. off. Yeah. Father's Day is celebrated in over 110 countries around the world. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Just so, not necessarily on the same day. But we started it. I'm with Dan. Yeah, we right, do it we best. Did. USA. <laughs> Stugats here. Summertime is here, which means travel season is upon us. If you're like me and love to travel during the warmer months, the first thing you worry about before traveling is how safe will my home be? 
while I'm away. I no longer worry about that now that I have Simply Safe installed in my home. I've had my Simply Safe system in place for several years now, and it's giving me such peace of mind. Simply Safe is advanced home security that puts you first. I have the wireless indoor camera. It allows me to see what's going on inside my home. They have a variety of indoor and outdoor cameras plus sensors to detect break-ins, fires, floods, and more. Simply Safe has been named in U.S. News and World Report's best home security systems for five years running and ranked the best customer service in home security by Newsweek and by Stugatz. Simply Safe has given me real peace of mind. I want you to have it too. Right now, get 20% off any Simply Safe system with Fast Protect monitoring at simplysafe.com slash DLB. Again, get 20% off any new Simply Safe system with Fast Protect monitoring at simplysafe.com slash DLB. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Don Lebertard. He has been great. He's made great hires. I said all. We've said all. He said all. He said all. Everyone has said everything. First, everything, first I heard any of this, Greg. Everything yeah. you're saying. It's all been said. It's all been said. Okay, yeah. you got to understand one thing. Stugatz. Me maximum. That's Until right. Until I say it, it hasn't been said. <laughs> Boom. Okay, understand that. You're the mayor. Until I yeah. say it, it hasn't been said. Me maximum. Me maximum. Me maximum. Me maximum. Me maximum. This is the Don Lebertard Show with the Stugatz. I do want to get to what the Celtics did, Stugatz, because... Won. Uh, yes, they yeah. won. Yeah. And not only did they win, though, they did um, what Tom Brady did, which is uh, they beat the respect out of everybody, whether you want to give it or not. Um, here are some of the stats. They had an NBA record 10 30-point wins. They had an NBA record 3 50-point wins. They had an NBA record 17 25-point wins. They had more 30-point leads, 17, than they had 10-point deficits all season, (laughs) 16. They won or tied the season series with every team in the league except Denver. God, I would have liked to have seen them have to get past Denver. Mm -hmm. They won the Eastern Conference by 14 games. It's the largest margin in 50 years. They averaged 1.22 points per possession. That's the best offense in NBA history. Their longest losing streak this season was two games. They clinched a playoff spot 17 days before any other team. They never trailed in a playoff series. They allowed the fewest free throws in NBA history, and now Jason Tatum has won a title at an earlier age than Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Shaq, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant. It's a little bit hard to argue. You can hate if you want. You could say injuries and they never had to beat anything better than a four seed. But the And you can complain about, well, they won all their games easily and the three they lost in the playoffs, they got blown out in all of them. But it's all nitpick. This is statistically, empirically, whether you want to believe it or not, one of the best NBA teams we've ever seen. And one of the reasons it's confusing or hard to make them that, Stugatz, is just because they perfected the modern game. They, they, that is not the best offense I've ever seen. It's just the best offense when you've got three-pointers involved in a league that's taking 40 of them per team a game. It's a well-built roster. Uh, they've done a great job. Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum are fantastic. Jalen Brown winning the MVP is an absolute joke. He had no business winning the finals MVP. That should have went to Al Horford. Everyone knows that. It was a great night. I mean, the Celtics historically, Dan, are an overwhelming team, a great team, and because of who they played to get to the NBA Finals and win in the NBA Finals, I feel like they're not going to get the credit that they deserve. But they have been great all year. This one I never know about, right? The credit they deserve. It says forever that they're champions, and we all think right now that this is starting. They're still young. Tatum, uh, Tatum has had an amazing career for someone who is 26 years old. But to Stugatz's point... I really do believe that they gave the finals MVP last night only because it's sponsored. They had to give it to somebody. You cannot give it to somebody who in the last game goes 7 for 23 and 2 for 9 from 3, but they couldn't give it to Tatum because he was 11 for 24 and 1 for 7 from 3. It was a shit game to watch. But they strangle you. That team doesn't allow free throws, and they defend threes very well. And 
what you saw last night is they had to give somebody the finals MVP. And so I say we should put an asterisk this year on the finals MVP and we should sponsor the asterisk. We should uh, hmm. we should because we can't take it away. Right. We can't. It, they have to give it out because it's a sponsored award. You have to. Right. I mean, in my personal record books, Dugatsbook.com, I can take it away, but we can't take it away. You're right. Nobody can take it away, so the best that we can do is get an asterisk and sponsor that, right? So let's make sure to do that, please, over the course of uh, of the show, because I don't think that Jalen Brown did anything in that series other than wear a uniform for the team that happened to win it. Like we could, it, I, I could have easily given that to Drew Holiday, last night yes. included. Yes, yes. You have to give it to Al Horford. I mean, the man was drafted before, a day before the iPhone was released. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> that can't be true. <laughs> no, it no, is true. Yeah. 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 And there's old Tito Horford cheering for his son. Uh, it, was it was great. great. What a great moment. Yeah. If yeah. you're going on sentimentality, yeah. Al Horford is certifiably the finals MVP. Mm-hmm. There's no question about it. <laughs> they don't go on sentimentality. <laughs> they, they tend they to go should, by though. play on the story, court. Right. But in the absence of play on the court worthy of a finals MVP, <laughs> maybe we should go on sentimentality. I'd have voted for Tatum. And and by the way, one stat you didn't mention. Last night, Jason Tatum surpassed Kobe Bryant for the most career playoff points at age 26 or younger. This is a young man. It, it's one more reason for Heat fans down here to be a little bit uh, dejected because this is a team that is built to, to like be really, really good. And you can argue certifiably that they did have an easy path, but they're also a great team. They were great all season. What a richly deserved championship. Congratulations, Boston. They are going uh, weird that you would do that that way. Uh, that you would. Uh, we don't do enough of that, Dan. We try to tear a team down, tell them to do it again, you know. No, and yeah, and, and we're from, in Miami, people hate Celtics. Mostly they hate, they hate Boston fans, okay? I've, I've never rooted for or against fans. I don't care. This is a likable team from Al Horford all, to me, all the players are likable. Drew Holiday is a great guy. Porzingis was a great signing. They've done everything right, the Celtics, to build what they have. Your Lawrence Mass roots are showing. <laughs> I, I am a native Massachusettsian, Ian. What do you got, Massachusettsite? I don't even know what they're called. No idea. Yeah. You'd think a native would know that. Well, I'm from Lawrence, which nobody admits. Uh, if I were from Boston, you know. That'd be different, but mm-hmm. Lawrence is Bostonian. About, yeah, right. Lawrence is about uh, four, thirty miles west of Boston, and uh, it's not a place you brag about being from. No offense, Lawrence. If you're from Lawrence, believe me, I grew up on Lawton's hot dogs. My mother worked at Merrim Knitting Mill right across from the Merrimack River. Uh. I know Lawrence, and I'm from there. And believe me, I'm uh, my roots are in Massachusetts. Thank God, my dad. Move the family down here looking for work. <laughs> but still, I love me some Massachusetts. Didn't you and Uncle Dick try to buy Lawton's We dogs? looked into it. Yeah, and it, it literally fell into the Merrimack River before we could buy it. But uh, that's a sad story. Lucky for one. you guys. Yeah. yeah. It'd be worse if it <laughs> right. fell in after you bought it. Yeah, Correct. Right. That's yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> you okay? I was going to say blessing in, deci- in disguise, but it sounds like it's a blessing in the river. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People, people listening to my voice from the area know all about uh, Lawton's hot dogs, believe me. I believe they boil them in oil. I think that's how they cook them. Oil? Yeah, with a top slit bun that's really popular in New England. Uh, my mouth's watering. Hmm. Anyway. That is the first time Greg Cody has ever addressed the correct camera when talking to a group of people from Lawrence as if they're gathered around their television today <laughs> to see if they could drink the Miami <laughs> tears after the Celtics have won. Stugatz. The Celtics are coming down here to party. Uh, they have a team flight at noon coming down here to get <laughs> drunk for three days. I think if the Panthers do indeed win the title, I don't know if I jinx them by saying they might win it tonight uh, that they should go and uh, go to Boston after the game <laughs> and celebrate uh, celebrate with white people <laughs> celebrate uh, go to go to, the, go to make, get a team Only get, get people, a team yeah. flight for Kachuk and <laughs> Barkov you want to go spend some time with uh, Bostonians or uh, Massachusetts first they have to go to quarter deck yeah. yes yeah. 1929. I like the idea of the winning team celebrating in the opposing team city. 
actually. Go to Dallas. Or if you're the Panthers, go to Edmonton. Well, I, oh, I, I, le- I legitimately <laughs> don't know if Boston is coming here because the party's better here or because of how funny it is to do this on the Heat's <laughs> turf. After the last five years. Yeah. After the last five, last five years, those two teams have been fighting at the top of the conference, and now only one of them forever gets to win. Massachusetts is a weird state. I think the bars and the clubs close at like 1 o'clock. So if you want to party there, you can't do it too late. You come to Miami. It's a smart play by them. It is, and you do it right in front of the fan base that hates you the most. Put it on the poll, Juju, <laughs> at Lebitard Show. Are the Celtics coming to Miami because uh, one, exa- <laughs> one option is the party is better there or because the Miami Heat play there? <laughs> it's it funny. It should start a trend. I think the Florida Panthers should go to Edmonton to have their parade. Yeah, Steve That's a Martin. good idea. Yeah. Isn't that what Stugatz just said? Didn't you? Did just... he? Yeah, Steve Martin. Were yeah. you not listening to? Yeah. Did he? He's sitting right across from. I didn't hear that. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And he grab your drink. Yeah. He he was sitting right across. Yeah. And from what did you. he say exactly? Let me roll tape. Let me hear what he said. <laughs> if I miss it, I'm sorry. You just said it. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's worth re. Yeah, me maximum type thing. It's worth reiterating. Yes, thank, thank you. you. I said it. Now it is. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> with with last night's performance, though, Jason Tatum, who Greg Cody would have voted for MVP, and I saw like at least three or four people that voted voted Jason Tatum for MVP. With last night's performance, he finally pulled ahead of Patrick Ewing for the second worst field goal percentage in NBA Finals history, minimum 150 attempts. On a scale of 1 to 10, how happy was Jason Tatum for Jalen Brown winning the MVP? Oh, wow. Four. That's a good question. I agree. Four. Uh, Michael Pena on Twitter writes, Jason Tatum officially becomes the sixth champion in history to lead his team in playoff points, rebounds, and assists. He joins LeBron, Bird, Jokic, Hakeem, and Duncan. MVP. All with a sub-40% from the the field and under 40% from uh, three-point land. I think he was 10 for, what, 37 uh, this finals. I think uh, it's right to have questions about Jason Tatum still, but to me it's not even a debate considering the last two most valuable players uh, in the series that they've played in have gone to Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown's very clearly, I think, their, their number one now. I think with Tatum, what's interesting is the guy never had one of those moments late in the game where he had to do something, hit a big shot. He was never, the team wasn't pressed like that. Uh, really throughout the entire postseason. But he did check off some boxes. Like, they got it done in a closeout game. It was impressive. They blew that team out. And he drove to the rim a lot. He did. And dished the ball a lot. He was not just chucking threes, although he shot a lot of threes. But he was going to the rim a lot, and he was distributing the ball a lot. And that was impressive to see. All while shooting worse than J.R. Smith. I, I get it. The lament that his percentages are low will obviously be something that just drifts out to sea. Nobody cares. Except Mike. I I think that there's a discussion in that you can still have the questions about Jason Tatum because he wasn't their most valuable player. And people can parse that because he wasn't particularly awesome. I think we all wanted to see Jason Tatum be the guy not just in the NBA Finals, but throughout the postseason, and he wasn't, if you want to nitpick. But yeah, he checked the biggest box, and that franchise checked the biggest box, and it was a war of attrition for them. They made a gutsy move in the offseason, credit to them, and they were pretty healthy, but they had to deal with a big injury in Kristaps Porzingis. They ran through the entire postseason like a hot knife through butter. They ran through the entire league all season. Clearly the best team all season. I wonder if this is the start of something close to a dynasty or a dynasty. I do. I don't know how. Like the last six seasons, which was shocking to me, the NBA has had a different champion every single year. That's not the norm in the NBA, but it feels like this team is just getting okay, started. No, well, I, a I don't want to do that with you because a we do that too quickly. Right. That's a that's a two A's. I just did two A's. I did because mm-hmm. uh, th- this is going to be this is going to have before we get back to the asterisk. I'm going to have like a, a bunch of A's and B's here. Okay. <laughs> Boston Billboard. Is this a dynasty? 
then maybe you jinx them, and then it's not a dynasty. Well, yeah, I, I just love the idea that billboards decide championships. I'm going to start putting them up all over the place because this is a, you know, a superstition that's clearly infallible. No, I'm the silly one for saying, hey, it's not a good idea to put up we are the champions before we are actually that's champions. No. I, 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 yeah, no, sue me. No. I get it. Every, we're just all having fun here, and I'm the guy standing in the way because of my superstition that's so stupid because I don't want to be taking a victory lap before there's actually a victory. Yeah. That's my bad. Guy. I stand you're, with you, Mike. You're just afraid of being the joke. That's all. Hmm. I understand. We are a joke. It's a cell phone. I know. Here's I'm, a joke that someone from our fan base has to explain to you. See why it's funny, even though we're not champions? I don't like it. It's a cell phone. I know. And it's thumbing your nose at God. You do not thumb your nose at God. Uh, no, uh, Greg says he's gods. overrated. Greg says the God that plays in Edmonton well, is overrated. The guy that is it's overrated is true. leading this series in points. Uh, and if you're looking to hedge, which I am because I'm in long game with this future for the Florida Panthers, mm-hmm. I'm going to place an emotional hedge on Connor McDavid to win Con Smythe because he might actually win it without winning the cup. Outrage. Mm. That's, a that that's a jinx. That's a jinx. That's a worse jinx than that's a worse jinx. I'm the cell phone. No, because I'm, I'm the so cell phone. How is it? I'm how the is cell phone. You double down right now. going to win the Con Smythe. Yeah. I mean, if he I said if the Panthers Dan, win, Dan but he clearly does not know how the jinx works. Oh, because he said if. He said if. If you put the doesn't yeah, know how the jinx works, yes. clearly, because yes. he right. keeps wanting to tempt it. If you put the, the bet on Conor McGregor, if you put that well, bet in... That would in, be something. That would be long. Or, what sorry, are the odds? Yeah. Oh, yeah. If, if you put the yeah. bet on if Conor we'll McDavid to win the Conn Smythe, uh, you're not jinxing the Panthers? If you no, do you're that hedging now? on your bet, and also he can win... Even if they lose the series, we've seen re- most recently. But he will Jaguar. win if they win the series. Yeah, one hundred percent. So, right. so yeah. right now you can get the Oilers at plus seven hundred to come back in the series and win it, or you can get Connor McDavid at plus seven hundred to win the Con Smythe. Wait. If you want to hedge your Panthers' future, what you do is, well, if the Oilers come back, when they come back, it's going to be McDavid that does it. Shut so up, let me bet McDavid to win Con Smythe. That way, there is even a scenario in which they lose Lord Stanley, and I can still hedge. I said when, so I can jinx them so then the Panthers win. Shut up! An action-packed fight card is taking over Las Vegas for UFC 303. Alex Pajeda versus Yuri Prohaska 2 in the main event. And then we've got T-City Brian Ortega versus Diego Lopez in the co-main event. Jump in on all the action at DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the UFC. And speaking of amazing, if you're new to DraftKings, listen up. New customers bet just 5 bucks to get 150 in bonus bets instantly. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code DAN. That's code DAN, D-A-N, for new customers to get $150 and bonus bets when you bet just five bucks get that big fight feel at DraftKings. the crown is yours gambling problem call 1-800-GAMBLER or in west virginia visit www.1800gambler.net in new york call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and y 467-369 in connecticut help is available for problem gambling call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org please play responsibly on behalf of boot hill casino resort in kansas 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance see dkng.co slash mma for eligibility deposit restrictions terms and responsible gaming resources Don Lebatard. Cheaters never prosper. Stugats. I ain't cheating. This is the Don Lebatard show with the Stugats. I just don't understand how us putting Mick overrated t-shirts in lebatardaf.com wasn't a jinx when we did it and the Panthers then just won the next three games. I, you very clearly don't understand because it was. He's the leading scorer in the series. And I tried to stop that and you guys just went ahead with it. <laughs> and hopefully we can survive it. <laughs> Mike, for all the leading scorer in the series stuff you're doing, you're thrilled with the way the Panthers are playing against McDavid, and you're thrilled with what his output is. You're, you would, if I'd given you this before the series started and said he's not going to score goals, you're going to keep him from scoring goals. You would take this stat line from him, even though he has more points than anyone in a postseason. I would say that if McDavid was easily the most points in this, had the most points in the series, which he is presently. Uh, I would say there's no way that the Panthers are leading 3-1 in this series with an opportunity to close it out at home. No, I no, I don't I don't I think he's been really good. I think he's been pretty dynamite. You wouldn't have taken this all the assists he's but had, no he's had goals. two I think he's had two subpar games. I think maybe you didn't catch it or whatever, but he actually really set up what should have been a game tying goal beautifully 
behind Bobrovsky through Bobrovsky's legs to Ryan McLeod, and Bobrovsky makes the save of the series. Maybe so, I didn't catch it. May, I don't think you did because, like, if if we're still going to be one note about the McDavid overrated Mike, stuff, I'm like, not one note on the McDavid overrated stuff. Like, stop doing that to me. I wasn't even here the week Greg Cody uh, said it. No, I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't on this side okay. of the country. No, you're right. You're totally <laughs> free from any blame on this whole Mick overrated thing. I as, haven't put up the billboards yet. Uh, but you put up the t-shirts and you're trying actively to put up the billboards right now so i don't I, it's funny to me that you're trying to disassociate yourself from the from the blame here greg's but, whole point was he's not an all-time great without a stanley cup right you. it That's doesn't it. matter how many points or goals or assists or whatever he gets if he doesn't he's win the win stanley cup, cup it's yeah. still the point took, greg made was he's not as good without a stanley cup he right. took a pot shot Okay, if if, if it's a pot shot. No, it's not. That's a pot shot. If there's no. you call him Mick overrated, that's a pot shot. If there's yeah. blame here, I'll take it all on. Okay, it doesn't need to go to any place else. True leadership. Because this is me. Uh, I have never said Connor McDavid is not a great player. He is. What I mean by overrated is he's telling you to talk into the microphone. I know, like a I'm, broadcast. I'm, yeah, that he needs that he needs a Stanley Cup, and he still might be able to get it. And yeah, to be considered, you're right. To be considered an all-time great, you have to live, uh, lift that cup over your head. Thank he's you. Got, he's, he's got to do it. But he's still pretty early in his career. He's just entering his prime. He's got plenty of time to do it. And he can totally change this series tonight with another brilliant right. performance. Yeah, and then another one, and then another one. Dan Marino thought the same thing. So, I mean, I don't know. 1984, yep. then when did it happen again? Yep. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He showed up with the tuxedo he was going to party in and never got to take it out of the dry cleaning bag. Mm. That's a jinx. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I hate magnifying the jinx thing. And it's not it's not a dumb thing. People have their superstitions. I don't like to minimize those. Okay, I do think superstitions are silly, but we can argue about that at another time. If you see a ladder and it's up against don't a wall. Don't care. Just opened an umbrella up in here last week. I just did that. Yeah, I don't hopefully care. we survive. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah I don't care crazy, about that stuff. Man. Uh, the, the things that I wanted to address from earlier in the show, okay, because we keep talking about McDavid, and to me, it's the reason it's funny is because it's one of the stupidest sports arguments I've ever heard. The idea that somebody, if they don't hold up the cup, he can't be considered an all-time great when I'm clearly watching an all-time great. Mm -hmm. And Barkley didn't win one. Ted Williams didn't win one. Barry Bonds didn't win one. Like, those are all-time greats. So you guys doing this is, it feels to me, like it's, it's a little bit empty. But something else that's happening here is P.K. Subban came in here last week and said, the best player in the world is Barkov. And the reason he's saying that is because he felt that McDavid has been minimized when Barkov is on the ice. Nobody before, never mind this season, no one before this series was saying Barkov's the best player in the world. Yeah, but PK was saying that because it was a Tuesday. PK has called three different players the best players in this series. Like he tends to swing wildly. That's how you do it. But I do agree. Like if Barkov <laughs> does indeed win a Stanley Cup, he all of a sudden gets lifted up into another tier. And it's kind of like how Andre Iguodala won a Finals MVP in that he just kind of neutralized. The best player in the world. That didn't really. Just made him inefficient. Or just, a little yeah. more inefficient. He still was scoring 40 points a game. And, and, and Connor McDavid has still got the most points in this series by a solid amount. And yeah, it, the story with Barkov is the tremendous defense that he's playing out there and making a lot of casual hockey fans pay attention to that end of the ice when they never really do. And, and to PK's point, and, and to what you just said, he's a two-time Selkie winner. He's a 200-foot player, as they like to say in hockey. And he's a better all-round player than McDavid. I don't know if you would agree with that, Mike Ryan. Uh, well, that's why Jalen Brown just won finals MVP, because uh, Dell scored 88 points last night. Jalen Brown's a yeah. better two-way player than yeah. Jason Tatum. I, I will say, you, you cited a lot of great baseball examples, and those are some of the greatest players. Barry Bonds probably the greatest player to ever play the game. But in hockey, there is a huge gulf in all-time greats and the list of best players to never win a Stanley Cup. Like the, the list is like Luongo and Pierre Turgeon. 
These aren't Ovechkins of the world. These aren't Yagers of the world. These aren't Mario Lemieux or Bobby Orr's. My the great point, ones win in that sport. But the great ones do yes. win in that sport. My, and that does serve your larger point, even though he's got plenty of time. It took Ovechkin long enough. What I was okay. just going to say about Ovechkin is he was an all-time great before he won it. It's the first time I was having this conversation around this thing. If McDavid loses in Game 7, it or if, if McDavid loses a close series, I'm not going to hold it against him. But let me go let me go back to what it is that Stugatz was saying when he was talking about dynasty because I, I it does it really does make my head hurt how often after a championship any championship in any sport people end up there when we just saw that the best team that Boston had to beat was a four seated Cleveland that was the that was the highest seated team that they had to beat well in part that's why I'm asking you if you think it's the start no, of something no, because the east is so well, weak no this is it's not because the east is weak the east was hurt this year Stugatz and 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 it was a rash of injuries that was a bit startling, and I don't know if it has a lot of precedent, but the thing that I wanted to ask you as it relates to what Mike was saying about Tatum and percentages, because this is the part that I find interesting about this. I gave you the stat earlier that Tatum has now won a title before LeBron at that age, Michael at that age, Shaq at that age, Steph at that age, Durant at that age. Do you know how hard it was for them to win those titles? Mm. Tatum was just given one and didn't even have to be good to do it. Now it's going to be made all the easier. I still want to hit him. I want to watch him hit game-winning shots too, but the first one was for free. Like, he got this one, and he didn't have to do the things that all those names I just gave you had to do. He didn't have to suffer it that way. With, let me see you, LeBron, throw the ball with five minutes left at home in game six, afraid to post up J.J. Barea, whipping the ball around the court, and then going into hiding in your home for two months because everyone saw you disappear when you played like that, and your team lost when you played like that. Boston, according to the ringer, has five of the top 50 players in the league. Five of the top 50 players. Loaded. That starting lineup yes. is what won that for them. That starting lineup is what makes it hard to give a finals MVP to them. But let's not act like that hasn't happened before. The Celtics with Larry Bird had a great starting five. The San Antonio Spurs with Tim Duncan had David Robinson for a year. I mean, they had great players. They had Hall of Fame players in Parker and Ginobili. All these guys had some help. Yes. I, mean, I, must admit, I must admit, Tatum did amplify aspects of his game that made me really take notice. Like, okay, you're... Your shot, for whatever reason, isn't going the way that you'd like it, but you're doing all the other things necessary to to help your team win. Like Tatum, it's not like Tatum was bad. It's just not what we'd hoped to see. And I think it's it's safe to say, and this is a loser's lament, that you still want to see that. But they can laugh directly in our faces as they party in our town. I, I think it's really rare to finish an NBA Finals and talk about the championship team and be undecided about who the MVP should have been and think that really nobody stood out and deserved it. But to me, that's the ultimate compliment about how good the Celtics are, is that, and forget the competition for a minute, they can be champions despite not having the one uh, otherworldly, historically memorable series by anybody. That's how good a team they are. From the haters' perspective, I see a team that really put together – a, a starting lineup that had five of the 50 best players because of how aggressive they were in the off season, and I see that the gulf between them and everybody else was that moves and was those moves and, and health. And the most aggressive team did win the uh, the NBA championship, and I hope it sends a message to the rest of the East that they got to match the aggressiveness. The Ringer Stugatz has top 100 rankings. Okay, so yeah. the Celtics have five of the top 50 players. No other team has three has more than three of those players. By rest of the East, you mean Pat Riley, right? I mean, yes, yeah, specifically, yeah, right. specifically, and I mentioned this casually, like on Friday, but I do think they're obviously going to be taking their their victory lap, and I mean they. I mean Boston Celtics media, they are legion, they are powerful, they are influential, but I do think them kicking their feet around, angry at the Damian Lillard rumors, and, and making sure that the, the flames got high enough to which Portland fans were fully indoctrinated, no deals with Miami, the front office was aligned, we're not dealing with Miami. As a result, they end up getting Drew Holiday and all that stuff. I do think, to a degree, they deserve some credit for what they did this offseason.
You think Derek White goes to the dentist this morning before the flight to Miami, or he's just going to ride out the jacked up grill for yeah, like all you're gonna week? You're going to self medicate. You're going to you're going to get <laughs> drunk on liquor and triumph and uh, what Mike just said, where he's crediting the Boston media. They're going to come down here just to listen to sports radio. Yeah. As as a team, they're flying <laughs> down. They're flying down. They're flying down. I'll say anything else, sir. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you're Derek White, you, you gotta you gotta keep the grill the way it is for the marketing opportunities that come with it. He's already been immortalized by a T-shirt there. Like it's a it's a heroic look for a basketball player. So ride that out as long as you can. Wait until they get a load of defo. Can we please uh, sponsor the asterisk on Jalen Brown's finals MVP? I'd like to figure out how it is that we do this. Can we uh, can we put up on the screen something that properly celebrates Jalen Brown because we must have a finals MVP sponsored? Yeah, I just I just found out. It's behind you if you want to see. The, the asterisk is sponsored by DraftKings. Uh, hear more about DraftKings and all it has to offer throughout the show. DraftKings, the crown is yours. Uh, it's sponsored by Miller Lite. You know, 96 calories, the best tasting light beer there is out there. Yeah. So this is all the sponsor uh, for the asterisk. Yeah, the asterisk. And it's also sponsored by Cuervo, of course. Yes. Brought to you, you know, it's a good time to enjoy the tequila that invented, invented tequila. tequila. And then, of course, game time. Okay, oh, very promo good. code Dan. 20% off your first purchase. Go Dan. We love an asterisk. Stugatz here. Summertime is here, which means travel season is upon us. If you're like me and love to travel during the warmer months, the first thing you worry about before traveling is, how safe will my home be while I'm away? I no longer worry about that now that I have Simply Safe installed in my home. I've had my Simply Safe system in place for several years now, and it's giving me such peace of mind. Simply Safe is advanced home security that puts you first. I have the wireless indoor camera. It allows me to see what's going on inside my home. They have a variety of indoor and outdoor cameras plus sensors to detect break-ins, fires, floods, and more. Simply Safe has been named in US News and World Report's best home security systems for five years running and ranked the best customer service in home security by Newsweek and by Stugatz. Simply Safe has given me real peace of mind. I want you to have it too. Right now, get 20% off any Simply Safe system with Fast Protect monitoring at simplysafe.com slash DLB. Again, get 20% off any new Simply Safe system with Fast Protect monitoring at simplysafe.com slash DLB. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Ah, mornings. Dragging yourself out of bed after another terrible night's sleep. Isn't it the worst? Mattress Warehouse makes it easy to find the perfect mattress. With our large warehouse assortment and low warehouse prices, we have a mattress for every body and every budget. Plus, 0% interest financing, a 100% comfort guarantee, and a one-year price match guarantee. So where would you look to find the perfect mattress? In a little mattress store or mattress warehouse?